What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another vintage collection market update. And I've got a pretty wide assortment of items, graded, ungraded. I also got a lot of the Razor Crest resale prices for you because those are starting to hit at people's doorsteps. And a lot of people are selling off the components, and I've got some thoughts on that. I've, I've tried to find every possible combination from a sealed, still in the mailer box, Razor Crest, all the way to the, the mint on card items that come with. I even saw a sale for a bagged Mandalorian from the Razor Crest. So I got a nice assortment. And uh, before I dig in too much further, I want to remind everyone that we have a giveaway going. And we're only about 25 subscribers away. And it's for, as you see right here, a acrylic case provided by Case Shells for the special action figure sets, the three packs. Uh, the, the, they fit both the vintage collection as well as the vintage Kenner. They're beautiful, well-made Case Shells. And I'm giving one away. I've got a plenty more. All you got to do is get me to 3,200 subscribers, and then I'll do the drawing. And uh, if I don't respond to messages or your comments in my videos, in the videos this week, it's because I pre-made the videos, okay? And uh, I've got some things going on with family, so I cannot respond to everything this week. I probably won't respond at all. I probably won't be online at all. So it's not because I'm ignoring you. So uh, just keep that in mind. Let's dig right in. And when I get back into town, we'll do some more market updates. I've got a, a lot of other cool videos planned. But this is the first one on the list. The 501st Legion Special Action Figure Set. And this has been consistently selling right at the same price point that we've mentioned in past videos. 150 to 175 seems to be going right. This is a, a, in really excellent condition. You can see right there it had a little bit of crunching there on that corner. Um, for a really, really nice, cl as clean as possible, no scratches. These things scratch up very easily, folks. Th this silver foil racetrack gets really scratched easily. The back, which is incredible, can get scratched super easy. So 175 maybe up to $200 is kind of a max. And then if it's got some defects, you can go down from there. But that one sold for $165 with free shipping. A few autographed items sold. The vintage collection is perfect, especially the newer releases are perfect for taking to conventions now that conventions are back uh, in action and getting them autographed. And this is a really interesting one. This is a Hayden Christensen signed Anakin Skywalker from Attack of the Clones, The Peasant Disguise. It looks like uh, this is the newer re-release and it's been signed, as you can see, by Hayden Christensen. It also included the Beckett's, Beckett Witnessed sticker on the back. So you would not, if you decided to get something like this sent in to collect your archive services, they could grade it immediately, and you wouldn't have to pay the signature authentication fee because it's already got the Beckett Witness uh, sign on there. So uh, there's one still available. One has sold for $350 plus $10 shipping. So pretty steep, but Hayden Christensen is not one that does the convention circuit very regularly. You also got to be careful because a lot of these can get beat up by these services that do it. And uh, they don't necessarily take great care of these things. As you can see, there's a lot of litho damage to his face area. And uh, just in general, the cards get kind of beat up on these. So you want to make sure that you, you really check it over closely. This is one that I was thinking about. This is the armorer, Emily Swallow. She is pretty active. She's pretty active. You can find these pretty easily. This is a James Spence authenticated example. You can see it's got the sticker on the back there as well as the card with the certification number. But uh, that one's a really nice one. It, I like the ink quality they used. You can see it's got a crease, though, in the lower right-hand corner. So these can get beat up. And a lot of these companies, these memorabilia companies, they just don't take great care of them. So you got to be careful what you're buying. This one was listed for $199 plus $10 shipping, best offer accepted. And then a different seller had another one that was in better shape. Uh, the ink wasn't quite as clean on it, but the card was in much better shape. That one was listed for $175 with $15 shipping, best offer accepted. So it gives you a rough price point for that one. That one's not going to be nearly as expensive as Hayden Christensen's autograph. Uh, this was kind of a, you know, I, I try to not always include perfect super mint examples, but this was a VC-17, kind of like 75 at best grade. So, you know, for those of you who are not quite as picky about the condition of cards, this is probably an opener, quite honestly. It looks like it's already got some pull going on on the blister. But even this one sold for 96 bucks. So, you know, you can see that Grievous, even on kind of opener cards, uh, where the card is pretty beat up and that there appears to even already be lifting coming from the blister, 
even now they're still paying 96 bucks for that so i would be really surprised if we don't see general grievous get reissued maybe he doesn't i don't know but either way this card back is probably not going to be redone with the rocket firing fet offer on it so it's probably going to hold its value long term if you get a really mint example uh, this is another one that continues to kind of surprise me with how quick it's going up and it's always been kind of expensive but i feel like lately it's kind of gone up quite a bit and that's vc 112 the sand trooper now this one's got the deco uh, paint deco with the kind of sand damage i think there's also correct me if i'm wrong you experts out there there's also one with a clean no no sand on the armor uh, this one sold for 200 dollars plus 12 dollars shipping so pretty pretty steep prices for a punched example uh, a couple of graded items I wanted to throw in here. This was an, an uncirculated 8.5 Imperial Assault Tank Driver. We talk about this one regularly. It's got the buy logo name pill and the, the Assault Tank Driver and the Assault Tank Commander on the Rogue One card bag. These, these things just continue to go up. This one sold for $175 with free shipping. So really nice example, though. Uncirculated 8.5. Here's one we don't talk about regularly, and that's these... Vintage Collection SDCC 2010 proof cards that were given away, I believe, at SDCC 2010. I've got a number of these graded by CAS. This was an AFA graded example, 8.5 on the modern scale, and it's labeled SDCC giveaway. That one sold for $100 plus $15 shipping. So it gives you a, a data point there for those. And they're not particularly hard to find, although the Slave Leia, like every everything else Slave Leia for the Vintage Collection, continues to go up that one can set you back 85 or 100 bucks now ungraded so uh, you can expect to pay quite a bit more for that one than any of the other characters boba fett i assume is probably number two on that list but uh, like luke bespin han bespin darth vader those are those are not particularly expensive there's also some episode early episode uh, prequel characters like anakin and obi-wan kenobi uh, that are not particularly expensive either. The General Grievous and the Co Com Clone Commander Cody, those can be pretty expensive, but uh, the rest of these are not. Uh, this one is uh, a another Ahsoka. It's never it's never a market update with the Vintage Collection unless I throw another Ahsoka in here. This one just closed recently. This was a 9.0 on the modern scale U.S. card back, unpunched. Very nice example. It was listed for $1,000. It sold for nine fifty. I did look that one up, VC-102. So even now, even, even with the fact that we know Ahsoka's coming back on a new reissue card back, um, VC-102 in high grade, uh, you know, it's, it's still getting pretty good money. I mean, 950 is a big number. It's certainly not as high as where it was. I mean, we, we saw like $1,700, I think even $1,800 in some of the Facebook groups for a, a CAS-95 grade Ahsoka. So it's not hitting those numbers anymore, but it's still, you know, we're, we're pushing a thousand bucks for a nice high grade AFA example for Ahsoka. Uh, it seems also like the Boba Fett droids target exclusive is starting to settle down a little bit. It seems I, I saw a number of recent sales that were all kind of in that 65 to 75 dollar range. This one sold for 67 dollars and I just pulled that up as an example. But uh, even in hand examples, they're all they're all settling in around that price point. So we saw it get up into like the 130 range, but it's slowly pulling back down. But it seems like the the recent floor these days has been about 65 bucks for the droid Boa Fett. I expect that one to kind of you know maybe pull back a little bit more, and then it'll start creeping back up again after those waves hit retail. It's just a, it's such a beautiful item. I'm so glad I've, I got one, uh, courtesy of Tim over at Boss Bounty. It's just one of my favorite releases recently. Uh, the Rogue One Antok Merrick's X-Wing Fighter has also settled down. This one sold for $86 on seven bids. This was a sealed example. It's looked to be in pretty good shape. Uh, 86 bucks plus $21 shipping. About 100 bucks is where they've been consistently selling. I saw a number of examples that after factoring in for shipping, it's about 100 bucks. So that one's come back down a little bit. Let's dig in to the Razor Crest. I know a, a lot of you guys have got your Razor Crest in hand. Congratulations. I did not get one just because I don't have the money for it. This one had a ding on the box, and it was only for the Razor Crest, the ship only with the box. That one still sold for $500 plus another $40 shipping, so $540 for just the Razor Crest and box and contents, none of the figures. Um, and so that still sold for above what the original HasLab price was, which I believe you guys told me was, was $350. Uh, here's one that was still in the sealed mailer box. Um, well, not sealed, but it wasn't with the mailer box, and it looked to be really clean. That one sold for eight fifty, 
and another one that was in the in the mailer box that this one was sealed still that one sold for 900 plus 30 dollars shipping there were probably about 10 transactions that i found on ebay in the u.s and that seems to be the going rate for a mint and sealed box right now uh razor crest if it's out of the box but the box shows nowhere 850 to 900 pretty easily still in the mailed sealer you know sealed mailer box that can sometimes not get you as much just because people are taking the risk that the contents and the and the retail packaging is not damaged and i have heard that some people are going to be submitting these for afa grading so uh that should be interesting to see when those come back here's another sealed mailer box example that one sold for 900 dollars on free shipping and now again going back to what my premise was there this one was a very clean example it did have one ding in the corner down here as you can see but even that one still sold at auction for $960 plus free shipping. So that's come off a little bit from what we saw even last week. We saw a high of $1,400 or something crazy for a mint and sealed box uh, Razor Crest. But uh, it's come back down just a little bit now. And, you know, folks, there are 28,000 of these over here. It's not like they're, they're super rare. They're not nearly as rare as the Yak Face Barge. So will the Mandalorian Razor Crest ever reach sale barge prices? Probably not. Probably not, just because there's so many of them. But you also have to factor in that a lot of people can fit the Razor Crest in their collection room where they can't fit the, the Sail Barge in their collection room. It's just too big. And both of these are too big for me. So, But I, I do think that in general, if you're a vintage collection collector who's got the space, obviously you're going to be willing to pony up more for the Razor Crest just because it's not quite the space hog that the Sail Barge is. Um, uh, they're, they're they're both amazing items. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have the space for it. It's just it's just way too much space. They look incredible though, and I I can't wait to see one graded sell. I bet it sells for two thousand dollars plus. We'll see. Um, the, now we're going to talk about the content. So you got the sealed baggie with Mandalorian, and then you had two mint on cards: the Grogu specialized vac metalized Grogu uh, pram, and then you also had the off world Jawa Elder. Well, I tried to find some examples of all those sales. I didn't pull up all of them, but I just wanted to give you a general idea of where they're selling. Just the baggy Mandalorian is selling anywhere from $90 to $110. This one sold for $100 plus $10 shipping. So that's what it looks like in that sealed tape sealed baggy. I'm sure somebody's going to get that graded. That would be kind of a cool thing to, to get graded. Um, and then here are the contents for the Razor Crest. You got the Grogu Razor Crest version with the kind of shiny version of the Pram unpunched cards and then here's the off-world jawa elder and he comes with that that kind of egg that opens up but uh that's what the backs of the cards look like i love the backs of these cards very very cool especially the vc the haslab has 001 uh grogu i love that photo on the back both photos are really good but you got has 01 and 02 um just beautiful items these do have a little bit of wear on them so i'll, I'll be curious to see how they're packed uh, the the Grogu had some warping on this card, which may come out with, you know, a good stretching inside a uh, uh, a case shell. But I just wanted to to show these because that's how they were packed, and you know, it looks like they got maybe some minor edge wear, but not nearly the same issues that the triple triple zero Yak Face did, where it actually had a printing problem on the front of the card with that half circle on it that caused kind of some damage to the card back. But anyway, these two sold for two hundred and fifty five dollars plus. $10 shipping, probably in like 85 condition at best, but but very nice. Uh, here was another one. These sold for $300 plus $11 shipping. These look to be in better shape. But look how beautiful those two mint on cards are. Really nice. Really nice. Um, I'll, pro I'll probably end up getting these at some point. Maybe not. I don't know. But uh, the, I, I might let... The, I might let the market settle down a little bit. Right now, everything everyone's going to be kind of overpaying, and I'll be curious to see with, you know, there are, like I said, there's 28,000 of these that sold. Certainly, a lot of collectors are going to keep them, but a lot of people just wanted the Razor Crest. And um, with that many out on the market, I, I can't see these selling for uh, Yak Face prices. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. But, you know, both of these characters essentially are just new card backs, right? They are unpunched, which is nice. But, they're basically the exact same figures with just some slight changes to the contents and obviously the card backs are unpunched and being exclusives and the card back the backs of the card backs are amazing um but i, I don't know if they'll hit 300 bucks a, a piece i just i don't know if they'll hit that price but we'll have to see and then here was one for all three of them so you had the, the you had the baggie as well as the two mint on cards that one sold for 430 dollars, so more than the entire backing of the razor crest so in 
in theory or in, in summary, to me, it was a mistake to not back the Razor Crest, right? I could have bought uh, the Razor Crest, kept the contents, and then sold off the, the ship. But um, it is what it is. That's just the way it goes. I can't have them all. Uh, but it's really cool to see some of these out and hitting the market. And I just thought for those of you who have these contents that aren't planning on keeping it, at least you got some data points now as to where they're selling uh, so you can price it effectively and maximize your return on, on your investment because you guys made a great investment for those of you that bought it. And uh, now if you're not going to keep those internal, you know, mint on cards in the baggie, well, now's the time to be selling it when, when the market's hot. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be responding to messages or comments in my videos, but I do encourage you to watch my videos. I, I, I did make quite a number of really good videos for while I'm away. So you guys have some content while I'm, while I'm gone and, and kind of tied up with some family things. But uh, I hope you enjoy those videos. Uh, the comic book video that I made, I'll warn you, is way out of date. I made it before episode six of the Book of Boba Fett. I did not expect some of the things that I talked about in the video to happen, but it looks like I was very fortuitous with my predictions because obviously Cad Bane made his appearance and I talk about, hey, maybe you should buy Cad Bane's you know, comic book. It's going to sound silly now, given that we've already seen him in the book of Boba Fett. But uh, uh, I hope that some, maybe some of the other data in there will be a little bit more useful to you, although the Cad Bane data is clearly out of, out of date now that uh, he has made his big debut in the book of Boba Fett. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon.